What's new, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. I got a very special episode for you guys today, something that I've never done on the podcast before, and that is bring on a guy that is not a father just yet. Uh, New England Patriots tight end Matt Lacoste is expecting his first child in November. Uh, so I brought him on as an about-to-be dad here. It's going to be exciting to pick his brain. I'd love to hear your comments down below on what you think about today's episode. Uh, so tap the subscribe button down there, hit the like, and let's jump into it right now with NFL tight end Matt Lacoste on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, about to be father, Matt Lacoste. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Hey, Alec. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, hey, listen, this is a pleasure for me. Something different for the show here, for the listeners. Uh, let, let's just get it started like this here. Uh, hit the listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Yeah, so um, this was going to be my sixth season in the NFL. I played three seasons uh, with the New York Giants. I played uh, one season, two seasons with the uh, – I played – one season with the Denver Broncos, and uh, this would have been my second season with New England Patriots. Uh, my wife and I are expecting our first child in 10 weeks. Um, so for my uh, family safety, I decided to opt out of the season, especially with it being our first child and everything going on. Um, definitely putting family first. Uh, one of the toughest decisions I've ever made in my life. Uh, not an easy one. A lot of phone calls, a lot of late nights trying to figure things out. Um, but we're very excited for our first child and very excited to be back to football as well, but very, very excited for this first child. Yeah. It, it, that's awesome to hear, Matt. And I know it's been, it's been a tough year for everybody all around. We're all in a kind of, um, you know, untreaded waters here. We're all in new territory when it comes to this whole thing with the coronavirus. It's affected everybody's life, uh, no matter what industry you're in. So, uh, I can only imagine going through this while your wife is expecting. Now, did you guys, did you do a gender reveal or are you guys waiting to the end to find out the, the gender? Yeah, so we're a little old school. We're actually waiting until the end, which has its has its pluses and minuses. When you have the baby shower, a lot of like grays and yellows and gender neutral clothes and everything, and still trying to figure out what to pre paint the nursery and all that fun stuff. But uh, I'm really excited just because I feel like it just builds up if you wait to find out the gender, and like it's just a bigger like emotional high once the baby gets here. Yeah, we did that with, um, like I said, I, we have four kids. We did it with one of ours. We did our, our third child. We waited until the end. So we experienced it with the with the gender reveal and with, uh, you know, waiting to find out. And I loved waiting to find out. It was awesome to be in the delivery room and get that surprise. You get very few surprises like that in your life. So it's definitely something that's worth waiting for. Exactly. Get the heart pumping a little bit. You get to see what's going <laughs> on. Yeah, I, we're very excited. What would you say are the... Um, well, let me, let me ask you this then. What would you say are like your right now at this moment, 10 weeks out, what are kind of your fears and concerns heading into being a father for the first time? Well, I think everyone's fear, and I'm sure you had this before kids, is like you just want a healthy baby at this point. I know everyone says that, like, I don't care about the gender. Like, I just want it to be healthy. And, like, it's the most – it's extremely cliche, but it's 100% true. Like, I, so that's obviously my number one concern. And I'd say my other concern is, like, just like the day to day, like I changed my first diaper in my life about two weeks ago. So I'm very new to this. My wife, my wife is a pro, thank God. Um, but it's me just trying to figure out what to do and try to get it on like a schedule and try to make this work and learn as much as I can. I've been watching a bunch of YouTube videos to try to figure out what to do. Um, so I say I'm, I'm, I'm nervous for that side of things, but I'm hoping that I can learn enough in these next 10 weeks to not be nervous anymore. Yeah, I, I think Mike Tyson said it best. We said everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, and then it all exactly. goes out the window. So exactly. it's, it's one of those one of those experience things. What well, what's the relationship like with your father and, and your parents, and what kind of advice have they given you, if any, about uh, becoming a dad yourself? Yeah, so my parent my parents are the best. Um, they're uh, they live pretty close to us right now, so they're they're excited, uh, just as excited as we are. Um, but yeah, my relationship with my father is we're the, be we're the best of friends. Like we're we're pretty similar people. Um, we pretty much talk every day. I'm actually going out to go hang out with them tomorrow. Um, so they they did a great job raising. Uh, I have an older sister. Me and my older sister. Um, and I think the best thing they taught us is you you get what you earn in this world. Um, so nothing nothing is ever handed to you. Um, don't look for an easy pass or easy way out. Um, and yeah, I think that's one of the best things that I'd like to instill in my children as well is just that work ethic and there's a certain humility to it as well. And I think both my parents did a great job. And of course, like, of course, they just 
they loved us to death and we had a great family time and sports were a big part of our life and um, we just had a ton of fun and it was a great home to grow up in. That's awesome, Matt. And uh, it's great that you plan on sharing those same values. And what was it like for you, um, for you guys to see that first ultrasound? I know they're a lot better now than, than I, when I was doing it. I mean, my, my, my youngest is six, so it's been about seven years since I was looking at ultrasounds. What was the experience like for you first time seeing the ultrasound, listening to the heartbeat and that whole bit? It was like, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Like it was, uh, it was heart pounding because we thought we might've had a little issue there for a second uh, without getting too in depth with everything. And then when we got to ultrasound, the, the technician had a pretty hard time finding, um, finding the baby. Um, so yeah, we were both sweating bullets there for a second, but then she found it and it was just like the biggest rush of relief and like happiness and wife started crying. I might've teared up once or twice and it was just, it was, it was awesome. And, um, something we'll probably never forget. Yeah, we, we, my wife and I, unfortunately, we went through, uh, you know, several um, miscarriages throughout, uh, you know, uh, our, our process of this. And it's, it's, it is that first trimester that you really kind of sweat it yeah. out until you feel into that safe zone. And then, you know, uh, everything is kind of on course there. So I understand, you know, the trepidation that goes along with that. You guys have the names p- picked out for either one yet or, or you're still waiting to see what the child so- looks like? As of right now, we're doing the same name if it's a boy or a girl, but it's like, it's not like your Alex's or something along those lines. It's, it's extremely different. Um, it's more, people would say it's more of a boy's name, um, but we're obviously keeping that a secret as well as the, gen- well, we don't know the gender either, but um, we're keeping the name a secret. So it's gonna, if it's a girl, I think it's going to shock some people. The name. Yeah, I, I I think that's a great idea too because you don't want to you, you tell people the name you start hearing opinions and yeah it's the last thing you exactly. have to do. Like I dated this one girl in high school and I didn't like her so you can't call her that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that definitely comes into play and you know Matt one one of the things that I I love to ask all the NFL uh, dads that I interview on the show and you're about to be a dad you're not sure what you're having yet you're you're new into this what what kind of um. How do you feel about young kids playing contact football? And what do you think is a good age for them to start? We know all the stuff, reports, whatever they may be, true or false, about the CTE. So I know that's, as a dad myself, that, that that's a, a big concern for a lot of dads that are out here. Yeah, that's an awesome, that's an awesome question. Um, I didn't start playing football until I was in fourth grade. Um, my dad wait, made me wait until then. And I'm a big I'm a big believer in they need to play foot, tackle contact football before they get in high school and yeah there's all those reports with ct and everything but when you're in when you're in third fourth fifth grade my personal opinion i'm not a doctor obviously um is kids aren't strong enough to put enough force through a helmet to hurt another kid um and i think it's extremely important for kids to learn how to tackle learn how to hit before they get to high school where kids are strong enough to hurt another kid, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I just want to, for my own personal children, if they want to play football, that's fine. If they don't, okay, I'm not going to push them. Um, but I will make sure that they know how to tackle and hit before they get to a certain age. Yeah, well said. And I know that we do have the options now, which there's so many flag football leagues. When I was a kid growing up, we didn't have those. They weren't available. So either. It was either you played in the street or you played – you know, uh, you know, organized football. So I think it's great that there's some other options out there as well today, just to learn the skills of the game uh, before you start getting crushed by some of these kids that are out there. You know, they're getting after it. You know, with with the coronavirus, you mentioned that before. That's the reason why you choose not to play this season going forward. What has the experience been like going? I know as the pregnancy gets later and later, there's more and more doctor appointments, more checkups for you, for your wife to go through. Have you been able to be in the room with the checkups, or are you uh, prohibited from going in there? What has the experience been like going through all the checkups? and stuff during this whole pandemic yeah so our first two ultrasounds i was able to go in but i haven't been able to go in since um so pretty much i just drop my wife off and i just wait in the car um for her to come out which i i completely understand like our healthcare system is trying to do the best they can to mitigate risk um but yeah it's it sucks it sucks not being able to go in there and be a part of it um but i, I completely understand but the day that the baby's born, I'm allowed to be back there, so that so that'll be cool. Okay, yeah, that was just, that was my next question there to see if yeah. they had any certain restrictions. That would be uh, obviously I'd horrible. Go, if go they cr- crazy if I couldn't be. A, <laughs> I start, <laughs> start googling home births and all that. <laughs> 
Now, and I understand that you're 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 planning or it's on the fence here about starting a vlog about your experience becoming a father. Um, what what was the genesis of this idea? How does your wife feel about it? And what do you what, what are you thinking about doing it going forward? How would it look? How would it shape out? Well, the I guess the starting of the vlog is when I started looking at YouTube videos to try to learn how to do some of the stuff that I'm trying to learn how to do. Um, when I YouTube, like how to change a diaper, how to swaddle a baby, how to get a baby on a sleep schedule, um, there weren't a lot of dad videos. It was a lot of mom intended, um, mom intentional, which were all great. Like the ladies I listened to really helped me out a bunch. But I just, I personally thought it'd be cool if, uh, if I could make a vlog that kind of was geared towards dads. And then I ran the, I ran it past my sister in law, I ran it past my wife, I ran it past Kyle, who we both know. And everyone's just on board and thought it would be the greatest idea ever. Um, I'm an extremely conservative person. I don't like to have my face out too much around. Uh, so I kind of got to get over that. But I think it could be a good idea in a way for dads to see someone else in, in their boat. Because obviously I'm not the perfect dad who knows everything about everything. I'm learning just like probably a ton of them out there are. Yeah, and I think just like you said, you were on there searching for other people that went through this experience, and that's what new dads will be doing as well. So to find you and see other dads going through the process, I think it's great. I, I think it would be awesome to have it out there just so dads that are a little, you know, a, a little afraid or, or uncertain about what's going to happen, at least they can see somebody going through it. And I think it's a great way to document your experience, and it'll be, you know, something that you can have and hold forever. So I, I think it's a good idea all around. I'd love to see you do it. And, and yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, as long as I keep it real, like you guys are going to see a ton of mess ups and everything. Don't don't write in my comments. You need to be doing this new need to be doing that. I probably will figure it out for my wife. Um, so you'll see a lot of mess ups, but I think that'll be good, though. Yeah. And those comments will be coming, too. So you got to oh, expect I, that. I, I mean, I already know. Like, oh, you didn't put their arm down the right way. It's like, OK. <laughs> yeah. Social media <laughs> will throw the hammer at you for yeah, sure. But, but I'll tell you what, Matt. I mean, it's it's kind of like for me, I talk about this on the show, like the whole coronavirus quarantine has been really a blessing in disguise for so many families, mine included, where now the six of us in my family, we get a chance to spend so much more time together. And that's awesome for me. And I know for you now. I mean, if this had worked out where it was a regular football season, it'd be very challenging for you to go through a football season and becoming a dad. I mean, I've had a couple of guys that have been in the NFL that have had to have their baby and then go to a football game the next day. And it's very difficult, uh, you know, to, to manage all that. And it just so happens that there's a great excuse for you not, not to have to worry about juggling both. And it's a legitimate reason to not do it out of the concern for your family. So I think it, I think it kind of shapes out good for you and the fact that you'll be able to be there and spend as much time as you should spend with your wife and your new child. Yeah, that was kind of the number two reason. Number one was obviously I didn't want to put my wife or my child in harm because we, t we talked to doctors and they said women late in pregnancy and newborns are at higher risk uh, for coronavirus, which makes sense. Uh, but yeah, number two is I would have to be like, I'd have to juggle my time even more than I would if it was a regular season. I wouldn't get that, that first two months, I really wouldn't get to spend that much time with my child and, and with my wife who, who also needs help and needs to sleep and everything along those lines. So it is a blessing because now I get to be full, fully in, um, baby's due November 8th. This will be my first time home for Thanksgiving in 10 years. So our whole family will be able to get together and everything. So, uh, yeah, it's a blessing in disguise. Awesome. Yeah. Are you, are you doing any type? Do you have any certain routine to keep yourself in shape? Do you have any type of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what the protocol would be for you. Like, you, are you doing like your off-season workouts? Are you trying to maintain your, your health and your conditioning for, for the seasons to come following this? Of course, of course. So, yeah, uh, on another coronavirus uh, topic is we weren't allowed to, this off-season, we weren't allowed to go into the facility at all. So I built a gym in my garage. So that's what I'm, I'm kind of getting into and just keeping in shape the best I can. Uh, workouts will probably ramp up a little harder in December, um, but just trying to stay in good condition, good shape, and then put on some good muscle and get ready for next season. Honestly, I'm, I think I'm hungry and more motivated than ever to get out there and play next season. Uh, it's, tough. it's tough to sit back and watch, but doing it for the right reason. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, last thing I'll hit you with here, Matt. I mean, I, I, I always ask the dads that come on what kind of advice they have for other dads out there. You, you're just about to be one. So I, I would ask you, what kind of advice do you have for the guy out there that just seen the uh, yes on the pregnancy stick and just found out um, that his wife or his partner is pregnant? What kind of advice would you give that guy up to this point that you're at right now? 
I'd say just be be excited and be happy by it. Um, obviously, take a, take a deep breath because it's a lot. Um, you learn a lot, and um, especially your wife will learn a lot. But be excited, be happy, be super supportive towards your wife because she is going through an extreme change, and it's a lot. And I think the more you can be there for her and uh, help her out in any way possible and not so much think about yourself in these next – nine months and beyond and just really concentrate on being the best partner because they go through a crap ton of stuff and it's it's tough yeah well, well said i love the message this has really been an honor for me matt i love to see the smile on your face i know you're excited about being a dad i can tell you're going to be a first class father all the way so matt lacoste thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on first class fatherhood awesome thank you really appreciate it good luck to everybody out there